Hi, welcome to the Venezuela Pavilion. My name is Giuliano. Uh, well, I'm gonna make you the guy to the pavilion. Okay. So here, the expo, what are we greeted with at the entrance? What does this uh, well, symbolize? The, the main concept of the pavilion uh, is the design of this uh, sound frequency and they belong to the one of our most popular songs is like a second national anthem we call it Alma Llanera it's a, like a soul from the savanna so what you see behind me is uh, the sound frequency of the beginning of this song and it's what you can see outside the pavilion and the colors and the, the shape of this uh, sound wave it's also inspired in a group of artists from Venezuela that they do kinetic art. So they are very colorful and they do this kind of, um, like they play with your perception. Right. And then there's a, there's a video? Yeah, there's a, a brief about what you will find in the pavilion and what you will find in the country. Uh, Venezuela is one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world, not only uh, geographically but also cultural. Uh, and that is what it's all about in the first room. Uh, what does it mean, mega diverse? It means we have, you can go, go ahead. Yeah. It means we have uh, cultural heritage for many places. And also, geographically, we have many, many uh, different biosystems uh, which make us a very diverse country. Um, and I will explain you this in the next room. Here, what we're trying to show is all the, the different kinds, uh, color skin, faces and bodies of the Venezuelan people. We are very proud of our diversity. So we have cultural heritage for the indigenous people uh, from our country, from Africa, from Europe, from Middle East. And everybody's equal. Everybody's equal and we are uh, we're very proud of what we are as a nation. Um, and we are like, um, we, we gave very, really importance to all of this different cultural heritage. So there's big, big screens in there showing this. And then where are we going to here? Okay, so this is a, a brief about four regions of Venezuela, geographical regions, but also cultural. Because what we are trying to show here is these four regions connect us to the entire continent. For example, what you are seeing now is the Caribbean Sea. Venezuela is the northest country of the Latin America of South America. So uh, all the north of the country is the Caribbean coast. And that's not only beautiful beaches uh, and islands, but also a culture. A culture with their own traditions, with their own history. Uh, almost, uh, there's different languages there. So, uh, and it's one of our most important tourist places. Uh, in our country. How do you produce this uh, graphic, uh, this big video? Yeah, it's produced in Venezuela also. And the design of the screens also, it's everything from Venezuela. So you have a lot of um, uh, artists and d designs and uh, technology in yeah, the country? Yeah, I think like, like every country. Like Venezuela is a very modern country. Most of the population lives in, in, in the cities. So we have as many designers and videographers and movie makers as I think any country in the world. Uh, so what, uh, what you can find here is now the tropical savanna. Is this, this is the center of the country. So this is where we have this cowboy culture that is very, very typical from all America from Canada to Argentina, so every country has their own traditions. But it's a culture linked to the horse, to the cows, to the landscape. Um, and this is what we are showing here. 
And also we are part of the Amazon forest and the Andes, which is a chain of mountain that goes across from Argentina to Venezuela and end up in the Caribbean Sea. So we are part of Los Andes, which, which it means uh, an entire and very important culture from South America. Uh, and we have uh, high mountains, we have snow, we have a little uh, a part of the Amazon forest. So uh, we have the Caribbean Sea, we are part of the cowboy culture of all America. So uh, we even have a, a small piece of desert. Uh, so Venezuela is known to have a little bit of everything. Um, we have lots of wildlife, birds, um, and many, many species of animals. We have, like, I think Venezuela is one of the countries that has more natural reserves uh, in the world. So we how have- big, how, how vast those natural reserves? How big are we talking? Some of them really, really large. One of them is almost the size of Great Britain. And some of them are smaller, but uh, we have plenty. In every region of the country, we have many, many national parks which preserve our natural, natural environments and the animals and rivers. And you have mountains. Yeah, we have uh, snow. 200, it's Pretty. Yeah, almost 5,000 meters is the uh, tallest uh, mountain. And we have the longest and the tallest cable train in the world. So you can go to this mountain and uh, play with the snow and, and be a little bit, uh, a little while there. You can ski? No, we don't have enough uh, snow to ski, but you can climb and there's really good spots to, to climb there in Venezuela. So uh, the professional climbers are good customers, they come often? Yeah, we, they're in Latin America and South America you have uh, tallest and more difficult mountains. So we are not the, the preferred destination for climbers. I think Ecuador and Argentina and Chile has... Peru. Peru also. Yeah. Venezuela has the youngest part of Los Andes, so is a... Uh, it's a little bit like the, 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 the Alps. Yeah, it's like the Alps, it's like chain of mountain uh, or like the Himalayas. Many countries has a piece of the of Los Andes. How many people in Venezuela? Uh, almost 33 millions. We are a small population for the territory we have. We have uh, a million and 200 uh, kilometers square. So we are a very big country. Um, but 33 million is a lot as, as uh, yeah, but you have nearly like France or something. No, not France, quite, but France is double, a, but a, not quite. I think a, a third of the territory or oh, less. Really? And it, they have, I think, I don't know, 60, 70 million. Yeah. Uh, so this room shows our national resources. Venezuela has been for more than 100 years uh, an oil producing country. But um, recent yeah, research, recent research uh, told us that we are the number one reserve of diamonds in the world. Really? And the second Is reserve this a real of one? no, it's not I'm real. <laughs> no. Okay. Wow, that's. And the second reserve of gold after Australia. Where do you have the gold? Uh, over there. Yeah. And what is this one? Cobalt. Okay, this is that's cobalt. That's every smartphone. Yeah, in every smartphone you can find in the battery. You can find cobalt, so in it's my a, camera. Yeah, in your camera also. Our microphones. It's very important for the modern industry. We have uh, lots of uh, cobalt. As much as uh, Congo? No, not no. as much. No, but we have. We have the number one reserve of heavy oil in the world. It's the uh, biggest uh, crude reserve in the world, no? Yes, sir. Uh, bigger than Saudi? Bigger than every country, Iraq. but it's Iraq? bigger. Yes. Yeah. And it's heavy oil, so it's a little bit more difficult to uh, produce, but not to produce, to, to mine. Yeah. To mine, yeah. Um, uh, actually, as far as I understand, uh, many oil, um, uh, what do you call it, petrol providers need the crude with their, what do you call it, they mix, they have to mix it to actually make it usable. Yes, and 
that process we have to make it in Venezuela or at least part of that process because we need to get this oil out to the ports so it's really thick so we we make the first um, like uh, how you the call first it version the first uh, stage yeah, be, because first we stage. Need, we need to liquefy uh, the oil to so t the oil get to the pipes and we send it to the ports and then uh, it continues their way to other countries couldn't you just have a pipe going up north to the countries up there well it, it goes uh, by by ship Ship. Yeah, by ship. But you could have a pipeline going all the way. Here. Yeah, I, I think we guess we are, we were building a pipe to the south, ah, to, to Brazil and Brazil. in Argentina. Yeah. The big customers. Yeah, they are big allies in that moment at least. Uh, now the relations, they so are not that good, and that in that project, uh, I think, it was um, the main uh, like. Uh, the ones that go ahead with, uh, with a the big, project big is project Venezuela. The yeah, it's a, it's a Venezuela project. Um, I, I wouldn't want to get into the... There's so much politics with this. Yes. And, and with uh, your friends in the uh, USA and stuff, yeah. they need to... They, they, they want to buy oil, don't they? Yes, like why they, they Don't want. they just like make a deal and buy it and stuff? Well, it's not, uh, I, uh, I, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For many years, U.S. was our first uh, client. Um, like previous to the Second World War, it, it was our first client already. Uh, but for many years, they have so many power uh, in Venezuela that uh, our legal system made that we only win three percent of all the oil that comes out of our country which is a, a percentage that no country will accept, never. So 3% profit margin. Yeah, only for Venezuela, being the owners. So uh, you cannot accept that kind of a deal. So we make some changes in our oil policy and then we start uh, winning, I think, uh, almost 30%, which is a little bit more fair. And we have the condition that every company that wants to produce oil, that to mine oil in Venezuela, they need to make a new company with Venezuela. And in every company, we will have at least the 51% because the oil belongs to the Venezuelan people. Uh, well, and that is not uh, very pleasant for many people and countries and companies, but I think it's fair. Uh, what, did, what, did, what do other countries do? Like, uh, let's say, the Emirates or Qatar or uh, Iraq or what, what is the percentage that they keep? I'm not. A, I'm not an oil expert. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, so, I I know some things about our secrets, right? And all this. Yeah, of deal. course, of yeah. course. It's a it's a very complex industry. Yeah. The the oil. Um, but well, we are trying. Uh, we, for for example, at this moment, we cannot sell our oil because we are we have uh, U.S. sanctions. So we only sell it to countries that they. I think I, only in my personal opinion. Yes. Sorry, they have enough power to not have uh, to not be afraid of the United States, uh, Russia, and uh, China. China. But China and Russia is so far away. It's yeah. a problem not to ship all this stuff. I mean, there. I think the the main uh, uh, I I think it's not about quantity of the oil reserves in Venezuela, or at least not only about that, but the fact that uh, it's very near to the United States, so the shipping cost goes really really down if you consider taking oil from the Middle East. Uh, and then consider it the cost from taking it from Venezuela. It's, uh, you know, really, really close. I, I hope you figure it out and just make some kind of pipeline or something, a deal with the Americans, just become like, kind of like friends somehow. Yeah, Venezuela, be Venezuela never, it has never had the intention to be in a fight with the United States. Like I told you, they were our primary clients. And, and for us, it's also benefit because it's not only close to the United States, it's close for us uh, as producers. 
uh, we all we have refineries in the United States also now they took it away from us yeah. but we have refineries in the United States that belong to Venezuela Texas, right? yeah and they yeah. refine oil only for this for the United States yeah. but uh, and we have never have a position of uh, like yeah. like we don't want relations with the uh, United States what we are trying to make a point is we want relations relations that to be fair yeah. and we are not going back if they are not fair and who decide who is fair well the people that has the oil so you, know, you have a lot it. of oil but uh, hopefully you also have other things right because we have you, many you other to, resources you need to not just uh, rely on this uh, source of potential future revenue right yeah so uh, not venezuela and not any country must depend yeah. of, of one resource uh, not not any man or woman or family must depend on one resource yeah. that is very fragile so and I think our economy it shows yeah. uh, the fragile of being dependent of one uh, resource so we are trying to explore some other things not only mineral but vegetables and animals zinc uh, yeah so there's a lot of minerals, mineral wealth. Yeah, silver, silver gold. Gold. How much gold did you say there would be? Reserve? We are the second reserve of gold after Australia well, in the world. And you know exactly where to where it is? You can just uh, go and take it from the ground? Yeah. In fact, uh, I think um, 10 years ago, the state um, make a company to try to uh, industrialize the, the gold. Mining. Surely China would like to buy a whole bunch, a few tons, right? Everybody, yeah. not only China, yeah, everybody. We cannot commerce uh, yeah. with a variety of countries that we will want to because the, the US do, doesn't let us yeah. or doesn't let them actually yeah. uh, to buy anything from the US, uh, Aaron, from the Venezuela. Why do you show water here? Well. Many people don't think of water as a, as a resource. resource, yeah, but it's, it's one of the most important. In Venezuela, I think, if I don't get it wrong, is the ninth country with fresh water reserves, not only in the surface, but on the ground also. What do you do with all this fresh water right now? Well, we drink it, we... Uh, you export it or no? No, no, no. 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 Just no. for Venezuela? Yeah, only for Venezuela and for now and it's for you know our rivers we have lots of rivers that uh, our uh, biosystems depend on this water with fish yeah all right yeah for the and the oil industry takes a lot of water also all right coffee before we went uh, an oil producing country we were one of the biggest uh, export countries of coffee and cacao uh, and our cacao and our coffee is on the top list of the best cacaos and coffees in the world uh, so we are trying to get this back in the dimension it should have um, for now it's small families that have uh, brands of a very good chocolate and coffee what is but the brand of the good Venezuelan chocolate? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, Do you have partnerships with Switzerland? Send them the cacao and they make this? With chocolate? Switzerland, uh, with uh, Italy, with Belgium, but not the state, I think, not now. Yeah, the company to make The chocolate. companies, yeah, the yeah. families, they have. Uh, our cacao goes to Switzerland, Belgium, France, Italy, many places. So many of the chocolate that uh, the world is uh, eating. Like eating it comes from cacao from Venezuela, yeah. All right. Uh, all right. And there's a lot more around here. And then flowers, uh, tropical flowers. fruits. Uh, but the, the most important uh, uh, resource uh, is humans, right? Yeah, of course. So um, what, what do you talk about uh, the human resource in Venezuela? What would you say about that? Well, Venezuela is a very, um, very young country. Um, we have uh, the percentage, I think, we are like, the percentage of uh, age is 27 years old. 
So we are a very young uh, country. 27. Yes, 27 is the average age. So we are on the, how you say, like... How can there be, how can there be such a low average? That's crazy low. That's yeah. like uh, some cities in China where everybody only goes there to, to work in a factory and that's a little bit unnatural. But yeah. you have it as a natural average age. 27. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know the explanation of this. Perhaps in all South America you have a similar percentage, average. Uh, so we are a very young country, uh, we have lots of resources and we, are, we have a very resistant population, very creative population, uh, very kind and very, uh, I think, um, it's not easy for, for a Venezuelan to be like totally sad or depressed. Uh, we all, always are trying to uh, move things and change things and create things so uh, I think that's our best value what, what is uh, creativity going on here okay. is it also this, to do with the, the all this room it's inspired by a group of artists from Venezuela um, they work with kinetic art this is a, a, a replica of a, of a work of art by Jesus Soto which is a, an important artist from Venezuela. Uh, he's one of the most important artists from the Kinetic Art Group. Um, and there we have a, a work of art from Juvenal Ravelo, which is a, an apprentice. It was an apprentice of Carlos Cruz Diez, which is, I think, the biggest name in this group of artists. Uh, so he came here he gave us the work for the pavilion and he came here, uh, he was a week with us here. He gave, he gave us the work, but he left it on complete, on purpose, in the center, because he liked people to participate in the finishing of this uh, art. So he, he, come, he came to the pavilion and with the visitors he finished the... the this this work. Where the door is? Where does the go door go? To the future? Okay, <laughs> As a storage. I, something. For for what they told me, it's only to trying to take away a, just a little part of this work of art. And uh, what does this here? The colors and the shapes are also inspiring this group of uh, kinetic artists. The idea is to make different shapes. It's a mobile stage for our band. Uh, for the bands and the musicians of Venezuela um, to come here. How often do you have uh, concerts going on during the expo? Well, we have uh, for, a, for a week. Uh, the, in our national day it was the 7th of November and now we are expecting more music musicians to come here. All right. Uh, is the World Expo an opportunity for Venezuela to speak with all the countries in the world? and uh, find new solutions to all the kind of like weird problems that are going on? Yes, of course. It's a, it's a window to, to let us see, to make Venezuela visible to other countries. Um, and it's, a, it's of course an opportunity like for every country. So there are like meeting rooms and stuff like that somewhere around here where people go sit down and start talking with a heads of state that come by or something like that? Yes, of course. Like, like in every pavilion, we have uh, room for the visitors who want to just stay a little bit and talk uh, right. about Venezuela, yes. What is the music we're hearing? It's a, a group of songs uh, that um, some of our musicians made for the pavilion. All right, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for the tour. You're welcome. Here. You're welcome anytime you want to the Venezuela Pavilion. And uh, how, how, how can people get to Venezuela? There are flights going from a whole bunch of countries? Uh, not right now, a bunch whole of countries, but you can go to Venezuela as any other country. Uh, from, it depends, that, like any country, it depends. 
that's a, I think, I don't know how you say it, a bilateral thing. If I need visa as a Venezuelan to go to one country, they need visa to come to our country. So it depends where are you from uh, and what is the, like, the relation between your country and Venezuela. There are direct flights from Europe? Yes, I think so, from yeah. Spain. From uh, Madrid, maybe? Yeah, perhaps, yeah. I think so. All right, and otherwise uh, people can fly from all the countries around? Yeah, one of the most important uh, airports in the region is uh, the Panama Airport. So if you go to Panama, then you can go to Venezuela and to many places. It's very near, right? Maybe it's a cheap flight from Panama? Yeah, it's very near. All I right. think one hour and something. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for You're welcome, sir. Thanks.